So I've noticed my 2017 Chrysler Pacifica is idling a bit rougher than normal. Uh, throughout the years of ownership, it's gotten a little bit worse. Now that indicates normally an air fuel issue at that low RPM uh, that smooths itself up as you go higher RPM. It's just less sensitive to small disruptions in the air fuel ratio. Now I know that because if it were an ignition problem, spark plugs, coils, things of that nature, that normally manifests itself at high RPM, high load, think passing on the highway where you get a shuddering or a loss of power. So the good news is uh, air fuel system on these vehicles, we can do some simple things at home to make sure the computer is getting the best possible readings for the engine to make it run as smooth as possible. Before we get started here, there's a few things you want to buy. Um, number one, throttle body and air intake cleaner, just an aerosol can, a couple bucks. And then mass airflow sensor cleaner or electrical contact cleaner will also work in this instance because this vehicle actually does not have a mass air flow sensor, but we'll get to what it does have in a minute. Now, the first thing we want to check on because we're talking the air fuel system is our air filter. That's the easiest thing to change and inspect. Um, so to do this, very straightforward. We've got the positive crankcase ventilation tube here going to the air box. You simply press down on this gray button and pull that off to release it. Then we've got three screws. We need to loosen this hose clamp, and then we need to remove these two screws in the front of the air box, and that all can be accomplished with a flat blade screwdriver. So we'll loosen our hose clamp on our intake tube. And we'll remove our two screws on our air box. Slide this intake tube off. Set the cover to the side and then we've got our air filter exposed. Mine is in great condition. I just changed this not too long ago. But if this thing is gray colored and dirty, you can open this up a little bit. Obviously, that's going to be a big impedance to airflow and throw things off with your car. So you can either blow that off with an air compressor or better yet, just replace it. But ours is in good condition, so we're gonna continue on. Here's the intake into our engine. Right behind it here, we've got the throttle body. So this controller here, all of these are drive-by wire. And what that simply means is the throttle pedal in the vehicle does not have a wire, uh, a cable that's connected to our throttle body anymore. It's simply connected to um, a sensor. That sensor gives a reading to the computer. That computer moves a little motor on the throttle body and opens and closes that. So the first thing we can check out is the overall cleanliness of the inside of our, th of our intake. We can check out the overall cleanliness of the, side, of the inside of our intake and we can see overall things are quite clean in there we can see our throttle body and we do see some varnish or dirt on that so that's something we're going to try to clean off and the other thing we can see in here is our air intake temperature sensor so these newest vehicles these newest fuel injected vehicles are actually going away from mass airflow sensors which are notoriously finicky and get dirty easily and give you false readings they have actually shifted to these more accurate air temperature sensors and then additional oxygen sensors in the exhaust as a way of monitoring air fuel ratio and adjusting properly so if we just take a minute to try to understand what the what the inputs to the computer are to control our air fuel ratio it can give us an idea of what we need to clean or improve to make runnability get better. So 3.6 liters is the displacement of this engine. So on one revolution, that's the amount of air approximately this engine takes in based on its displacement. So they have a, a map of that where they know how much air the, the engine is consuming based on RPM, and throttle position. 
The other thing they need to know is the density of the air. That's why we've got the air intake temperature sensor here. So if we just think about that, what needs to be accurate is th throttle position and the air temperature reading. Next thing we want to do is go after cleaning our throttle body. To get at that properly, we need to take off our beauty cover. For that, we can use a T30 Torx bit and remove these two screws on front. And then there's two kind of ball and socket joints. We just pull up on the back. We can get that off. Now with the top of the engine, we can, we can see our full intake manifold here with our throttle body right here. So what we need to do is take off this part of our air intake system so we can get directly at that piece. And so we've got a small bolt here we need to remove to free us up. To remove this, we can use a 10 millimeter socket. So to get the re this out of the way, we need to remove our air temperature sensor And I'm actually going to disconnect this sensor, set it somewhere safe, and we can remove our air box. Now we have a clear view of our throttle body. We can take some towels and put it underneath there and grab our throttle body and air intake cleaner and spray off all those areas of the varnish. And we can try to get all of that discoloration off. After a few cycles of cleaning, things are looking like new. All of that varnish and dirt is off of there. So we're ready to put this sucker back together. So we're going to take our air box. We've got a couple points we need to fit here. This rubber ring goes around the throttle body. This is where we put the bolt in, and then this is one more point of attachment. It's a rubber piece that uh, fits down on a ball, and you just pop it into place. So we'll take our rag out of here. Get it fit on the throttle body first. Pop it onto that ball joint. And put our bolt in. Now we have our temperature sensor that we set aside. So this is important to get an accurate reading because this is what's giving the computer the density of air number. So remember our air fuel ratio are 14.71 parts of air to one part of fuel. That's not based on volume of air or fuel. That's based on molecules. So we need to know the density of air and the temperature that gives us that. So we're going to use our mass airflow sensor cleaner for this. This is a much more gentle cleaner than the throttle body cleaner. If you use that on this, it could damage it. So you need an electrical contact cleaner or mass airflow sensor cleaner. We're just going to spray off the yellow sensor portion there to make sure any dirt or oil film that developed on there that would be a barrier to reading temperature uh, is removed so it can give the computer the most accurate temperature possible. Once our sensor is clean, we're going to put use this tab, have it at the 10 o'clock position, slide it back into the port here, wiggle it a bit to get that rubber in place, and then we can turn clockwise to the 12 o'clock position and it locks it in place. We also need to make sure we take our wire and pop the wire clamp back in place there, pop it back on our sensor. Now we can put our beauty cover back on. The other thing that this does, 
call it a beauty cover, but there's a lot of sound insulation on the bottom of that, uh, so you don't get as much engine noise and valve train noise. That isn't desirable. Okay, our beauty cover's back on. Next, we have to put our air intake system back together. Pop our filter in there. Slide our cover back in place. Pop our tube on here. Get our screws started in the front. Tighten down our hose clamp. Tighten down our air box screws. And lastly, pop our PCV hose back on. Now that wraps up what we can do on the engine side. If we think about, I mentioned the oxygen sensors on that side in the exhaust, they are then sort of the, the feedback loop which tells the engine, are the initial assumptions I made correct? So those oxygen sensors are doing that. They're sensing oxygen in the exhaust that gives an indication of what the actual air-fuel ratio in the engine is doing. So those need to be clean. The good thing is those are in the exhaust stream. Any contaminants that could get on there, the exhaust temperatures are high enough to burn those off besides soot. Those are pretty hard to get at. Um, so we can clean those with an additive to our fuel since that's downstream of where the fuel goes in. The other thing we want to think about is our fuel injectors. So there's many things going on there as far as fuel rail pressure, uh, the percent load on those. Uh, but the one easy thing that we can do without a scan tool is, again, use a high-quality fuel treatment uh, to clean those injectors. And gasoline is a solvent on its own, so they stay pretty clean. Uh, but if there's a little contamination in there, they, their spray pattern might not be perfect and cause a little, little bit of a rough running condition. There is also a professional clean that's available at your dealership or most mechanics. They hook up a system out here and pressurize the, the fuel rail with some, some heavy duty cleaner. So that's an option if you're really having problems with that. Um, from what I've seen on that though, and the cost of that, it's, it's halfway to just replacing and, and putting all new fuel injectors in. So I myself would, would lean towards keep running it a little longer. And if it doesn't bother you, just keep running it. If it's a little bit rough, not a big deal. And save your money and replace them when they get worn out. But that's just my opinion. I recommend a high-quality fuel additive like this Tecron product made by Chevron. It's designed specifically for modern fuel systems in automobiles. All right, the last thing we need to do is fire it up and see how it runs. It's going to start a little bit hard right away because that throttle body cleaner kind of built up in that intake, and that's not gasoline, right? But it's going in the system and kind of affecting combustion. Once you get that through there, you'll be good to go. To avoid that, if you feel more comfortable, you can take that throttle body off and clean it out of the out of the place. So that wraps up our little job there, and I will say I believe this thing is running smoother than it has in a long time. If you found some value in this video. Really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching. Adios.